Hey guys, it's Daniel. Welcome back. If you like Nirvana, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I have a lot of Nirvana-related videos here, including interviews I've done with Steve Albini, Jack and Dino, and many others. In today's video, I'm going to take a look at Love Buzz. Love Buzz is a notable Nirvana song for a number of reasons, one of those reasons being that it's not actually a Nirvana song. Well, at least not the original anyways. Kurt Cobain was a big fan of finding rare CDs and listening to songs that most people would never have heard of, as was Chris Novoselic. Chris Novoselic, of course, is the bassist from Nirvana, and like Kurt, Chris was a member of Nirvana from the very beginning until the end. Nirvana's original lineup from 1987 until early 1988 consisted of Kurt Cobain, Chris Novoselic, and Aaron Burkhard on drums. During this early period, Chris Novoselic was given a compilation CD from a friend of his named Ryan. Ryan found this compilation CD at Dill's secondhand store in Aberdeen. In Ryan's own words, the whole beauty behind Dill's was that everything was a buck. It didn't matter what it was, every record was a dollar. And so if you found a gem, you really had something because you were only going to pay a dollar for it. The CD Ryan found was a compilation of some of Shocking Blue's different songs. Shocking Blue was a psychedelic rock band from the Netherlands. They were together from 1967 until 1974 and had a series of psychedelic rock hits during their existence, in particular, their song Venus, which was able to reach the number one spot in the US Billboard Hot 100 chart, as well as number one in various other countries between 1969 and 1970. Love Buzz is a shocking blues song, and it was also successful, though not as successful as Venus. As a matter of fact, if you weren't a psychedelic rock fan, you likely would not have known of Love Buzz. Love Buzz is one of the songs which appears on the compilation CD Chris was given. In Chris Novoselic's own words, I put the record on as I was getting ready for work and I thought, this is a great record. And that song Love Buzz came on and I was like, this is a really cool song. The following day, Chris Novoselic showed Kurt Cobain the song. Kurt also liked it and he suggested that they do a cover of the song. And so Love Buzz became an integral part of Nirvana's live performances early on in their career. Interestingly, Kurt and Chris didn't tell drummer Aaron Burkhard that Love Buzz was a cover. In Aaron's own words, we played that song for six months before I even knew it was a cover song. I mean, it's not like we sat down and Kurt put it on and said, this is the way it goes. I just figured Kurt wrote a new song. As mentioned, Shocking Blue was a psychedelic rock band, and their original recording of Love Buzz is very much a psychedelic rock song. Nirvana's version of Love Buzz is certainly not a psychedelic rock song, though you can tell that there is a psychedelic rock influence in it. Gillian G. Gar had the following to say about the two versions of Love Buzz. In fact, there are few similarities between their version and Shocking Blue's original. The Eastern flavor in the Shocking Blue version comes through strongly in its use of sitar. The song was also taken at a moderate tempo and has a harsher feel due to the stentorian lead vocal of Mariska Veres, who sounded not unlike Grace Slick. Kurt only learned the song's first verse and chorus, changing the original lyric, King of My Dreams, to Queen of My Heart. Intriguingly, he also changes Hear My Love Buzz to Feel My Love Buzz. Despite the lack of sitar on Nirvana's version, the guitar and bass nonetheless managed to create a suitable eastern-sounding drone, with the song's instrumental break allowing Kurt to indulge himself by creating squalling feedback. Nirvana's cover version of Love Buzz is one of the songs the band was set to record for their debut record, Bleach. As much as Kurt liked the song, however, he had no intention of releasing Love Buzz as Nirvana's first single, because unlike all the other songs on Bleach, Love Buzz is a cover song. Bruce Pavitt, founder of Sub Pop Records, the label Nirvana was originally signed to, had different ideas, however. He liked Nirvana's version of Love Buzz a lot, to the point where he insisted that Love Buzz needed to be Nirvana's first single. Kurt Cobain was not happy about this. In Chris Novoselic's words, he, Kurt, thought it was too poppy or something. He was worried that our credibility would be smashed. As unhappy as Kurt was at first about Love Buzz being chosen as the band's first single, he would eventually look at the song's selection in a positive light. 
It was one of the only palatable songs that we had. It was such a catchy song and it was so repetitive that we thought that people would listen to it right away and remember it. By the time Love Buzz was recorded by producer Jack and Dino in mid-1988, Aaron Burkhardt was no longer the drummer in the band. Chad Channing was now the drummer in Nirvana, his drum work appearing on most of the songs on Bleach, including Love Buzz. Love Buzz was released as a single in November of 1988, approximately eight months before Bleach itself was released on June 15, 1989. The Love Buzz single was the first single in the Sub Pop Singles Club and was limited to 1,000 numbered copies. An invoice from Sub Pop shows that 1,200 sleeves were made, however, the other 200 having a red slash instead of a number. Hey guys, I just want to quickly mention that if you do like these Nirvana videos I've been making and you want to see more of them, the best way to support me is simply to subscribe. Everything I do here is original. I have no one helping me make these videos and it's all self-funded. So if you guys do want to support me and see more videos, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Now back to the video. At one point, Love Buzz was named Single of the Week by music journalist John Robb for the UK music newspaper Sounds. This was the first time Nirvana was mentioned anywhere in the UK press. The single was also given favorable reviews in the US by publications like The Rocket and Backlash. The B-side of the Love Buzz single was Big Cheese. I've made a separate video about Big Cheese. If you'd like to see that, I've linked it in the description box below. Although the Love Buzz Big Cheese single did not sell many copies, it did get favorable critical reviews which got the band excited. In Chad Channing's own words, I remember reading the reviews and thinking, wow, the first single, the first piece of vinyl I was ever on. This is cool. I even got a review. And it was a trip hearing the single on the radio for the first time. I knew it was getting airplay, so I always kept an ear out listening for it. And it wasn't until I was driving home at night with a friend of mine and we were listening to that station out of Texas that you used to be able to get way on the right end of the AM dial, Z-Rock or whatever. That's when Love Buzz came on. This is from a band up in Seattle called Nirvana. It's Love Buzz. And it came on. And we just kind of looked at each other and I go, whoa, this is a trip. And my friend's laughing like, right on, man. You finally got something on the radio. It was a cool feeling. It was all just totally gleeful to me. Kurt Cobain has said on several occasions that he did not want to be famous. By the time Kurt reached the later stages of his career, that was certainly true. There's no denying that by that point in time, Kurt Cobain was no longer enjoying the limelight. But whether or not he truly didn't want to be famous from the beginning, this is a topic that has been heavily debated amongst Nirvana fans. Fans who say that Kurt did want to be famous point to the fact that Kurt put lots and lots of effort to get the attention of different record labels before ultimately signing with Sub Pop and with Love Buzz in particular, for instance, Kurt did whatever he could to get the single airplay. As stated by Jillian G. Gar, Kurt assured the band Seattle airplay by dropping off a single at KCMU himself, then phoned in a request to the station, waiting patiently in Tracy Miranda's car until it came on. He sat there hearing himself coming out of the radio with a big smile on his face, she later recalled. This accomplishment also filled Kurt with new determination. It was instant success and fame beyond my wildest dreams, he later told Michael Azared. I thought I would definitely like to hear my future recordings on the radio. It made us step up mentally to another level where it was a reality that we could actually live off of this. Fans who argue that Kurt didn't want to be famous often point to the notion that he put so much effort promoting his work because he wanted to be successful enough to have a career as a musician, not necessarily to get famous. This is a conversation which has always gone back and forth between fans on both sides of the fence. Love Buzz is the fifth track on Bleach. The version of Love Buzz which appears on Bleach is a remixed version of the Love Buzz single. The most notable difference is that there is a 10 second sound montage at the beginning of the version that was released as a single. The version released on Bleach does not include the intro sound montage. The Bleach version of Love Buzz was also included on Nirvana's Blue EP, which was released exclusively in the UK in December of 1989. I've made a separate video about Blue. If you'd like to see that video, I've linked it in the description box below. All in all, Love Buzz is a historically important song in Nirvana's catalog, as it is Nirvana's first 
ever officially released single. If you guys like my videos, please make sure to subscribe. Lots more coming. Thanks for watching.